Suppose I go inside the conductor. I go inside there. And I put sneakily a charge in my pocket. And I sit inside there, and you close it. Then there is a charge inside. There's nothing you can do about it. And if there's a charge inside, there's an electric field. So now we have a situation, and since it is post Valentine's Day, my heart has evolved into a sphere again. So now we take a spherical conductor, solid, this is solid <laughs> material, and somehow I'm sitting inside here with a charge plus Q. You can make it minus if you want to. That's exactly the problem 2, 1 is about. And now clearly, there is positive charge inside, so clearly there has to be an electric field. But the electric field inside the conductor, that means the electric field anywhere here must be zero. If it's not zero, the electrons will keep moving until it is zero. So the conducting material itself has no electric field. What does that mean now? with respect to any charge on the inside surface. Now there must be charge on the inside surface. Because now, if I make this my Gaussian surface, which is now a spherical surface, a closed surface, Mr. Gauss says that the closed surface integral of E dot the A over this surface must be zero because the electric field is zero anywhere. That's the same as all the charge inside divided by epsilon zero. So this, the charge inside must be zero. Since there can be no charge in the conductor itself, negative charge must now accumulate on the inside of that surface. So that the net charge inside, this surface is zero. So now we do get charge on the inside. And how much charge do you get on the inside? Exactly minus Q, so that the sum of the two is zero. Now this conductor originally was neutral. It had no net charge. So therefore, on the surface of the conductor, we must now see charge plus Q. Because the minus charge on the inside came from the inductor conductor itself, and so the sum must be zero. So now you get a peculiar situation that the plus Q charge inside, which creates an E-field inside, creates negative charge on the inside, the same in magnitude, opposite in sign, and plus Q charge on the outside. And the electric fields, they are very complicated. The electric fields, let me try to put them in. Uh, I would imagine that if this charge Q is closer to this wall than to this wall, that the negative charge here will be larger in density than there. It's really an induction effect. The negative charge wants to go to this plus. That's really what's happening. And so since this charge is closer to this wall than to that wall, it will be able to attract more electrons. And so it's clear that the density of charge here should be higher than there. And so the field lines, always perpendicular to the equipotential, so they must be always perpendicular to the wall, sort of like this. So I put in a few field lines. But here, the field will be stronger than there. So there is a field inside. What now is the charge distribution on the outside? That is the hardest of all, and by no means so obvious. It turns out that the charge on the outside, on this sphere, because it is a sphere, will be uniformly distributed. And it is not intuitive, and it is not obvious. Nature must obey all laws of physics. The conductor must become an equipotential. There can be no electric field inside the conductor. The electric field lines have to be everywhere perpendicular to the surface. The closed loop integral of E dot dl must be zero everywhere. And the only way that nature can do that is by making the charge distribution on the surface uniform. And that is amazing when you think of that. It's independent of the position of that charge plus Q inside. So if you start to move around with that charge plus Q inside, the outside world will not know. The outside world only knows that there is a charge plus Q uniformly distributed on the outside because it is a sphere. That would not be the case if it were a heart. 
but the outside world has no way of knowing that you are moving that charge inside around. So I am sitting inside there, and suppose I crawl inside there with a rubber rod and with a cat. And I use the rubber rod on the cat, creating positive and negative charge, same amount. The outside world will not know because I don't change the charge inside. I only have this plus Q in my pocket. The fact that I create plus on the cat and maybe minus on myself, the outside world will never know because the sum of the charges is still Q. They may hear the cat scream. That's all they can hear. But they have no way of knowing that I'm fooling around there with charges. And so, the outside world has no way of knowing what happens on the inside. And we call that electrostatic shielding. That's the effect of a Faraday cage. 